Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and this is my channel, Vitya. In this video, we're going to take a look at 10 things you may or may not know about Dark Souls 2. The topics get more obscure and interesting as we go. And don't forget to play the game where if you learn something new, you hit the like button. But if you know everything, you hit the like button, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, subscribe, Instagram, Tumblr, MySpace, LinkedIn, YouTube, Patreon, Kickstarter, DeviantArt, Napster, and MLG Supersite. Alright, let's get started. Number 10 is simple. Did you know that you're able to bat away firebombs? Yep, nothing more to it than that. Alright, the next one I'm sure a lot of people are aware of, especially PvPers, but I'm going to go over it anyway because it's a pretty cool item. Did you know that inside the doors of Pharos there's a special weapon called the St. Tears Spear? It can be found in a chest behind a door in a mammoth enemy. You may have even already found this weapon and simply passed it off as a subpar halberd. Well, if you wear down the item's durability, the stone on the end will be destroyed forever, giving it a completely new moveset. After being broken, it can stab like a spear, whirl like a twin blade, overhead hack like a halberd, and even spin to win. One final thing that might be a mystery even to those of you who know about the spear is that by joining the Rat Covenant, the durability will break much faster by attacking the mammoths even though they stay passive and you can't technically hurt them. For number 8, if you go to the undead ditch bonfire in the crypt just before Valstad, there is a ledge where you're able to drop down. After dropping down, you'll find a statue that you can interact with if you have a torch lit. Light the statue, and it will trigger a series of torches that illuminate the undead crypt. Alright, did you know that Profound Still is a pretty versatile hex? For one, it can render the figures in the shaded wood somewhat visible because it places particle effects on them when cast. It can also pretty much completely shut down almost any magic using boss like the Prowling Magus. For number 6, did you know that in the Chasm of the Abyss located beneath Dranglaic Castle, you're able to see Dark Lurker through a crack in the wall just before the boss encounter? Alright, for the next one, did you know that in the Forest of Fallen Giants, very near to where you activate the Pharaoh Stone to acquire the Titanite Slab and Chloranthi Ring, there is a locked door that says it can only be opened from the other side. This is interesting because there is no other route into the room, and there's no key either. Well, what you may not know is that to open the door, you must do a plunging attack at the door. This will aggro some hollow soldiers who will then open the door from the other side.
The fourth topic might come as a bit of a surprise, but did you know that the Demon of Song was actually inspired by Quado from Total Recall? <laughs> I'm so full of shit. For the next one, I'm sure you know about flipping the lever during the Executioner Chariot fight to cause the Chariot's crash, taking out the Executioner in the process and leaving a few really pissed off undead horses. Well, what you may not know is that if you don't hit the switch and you instead choose to deal ranged damage for the remainder of the fight, the Chariot will fail to jump across the gap when it reaches 30% HP. When this happens, the Executioner falls off the back of the chariot into the pit, and the undead horse remains on the ledge, struggling not to fall off below as it kicks its legs and flails for footing, allowing you to easily finish off the final hit points and sending it plummeting into its dark death below. Alright, for number two, did you know that Saldin, the crestfallen warrior on the coast of Majula's shores, is voiced by the same voice actor, Matt Morgan, who voiced the crestfallen warrior and Dom Hall of Xena in Dark Souls, as well as the crestfallen warrior in Demon Souls. Saldin is also the first crestfallen character in the Soul series to thus far not perish through storied events. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. We're welcome here, as long as we keep slashing up demons. <laughs> For number one, we must look to Vengarl, the severed head NPC in the Shaded Woods whose battled hungry body roams during Laic and can be found guarding the primal bonfire after the Duke's Dare Freya. Well, what you may not know is that Vengarl plucks inspirations from a Dullahan. The Dullahan is a type of unseelie fairy tale originating in Irish mythology. The Dullahan is a decapitated rider who holds their own head under one arm, wields a whip made of the spine of a human, and usually can be found on a black horse. The Dullahan is also the inspiration for the headless horseman in Sleepy Hollow. Besides literature and film, this former warrior now turned bloodthirsty headless body has found its way into gaming throughout the years in many different variations, like Vagrant Story, Castlevania, Final Fantasy multiple times, and many others. Now the Dullahan mythology has added Dark Souls to that list as well, with Vengarl. Alright guys, that's it for this episode. Don't hesitate to check out my other Dark Souls content, and I'll see you in the next one.